when a beautiful waitress who's aspiring to be an actress moves in next door to a couple of nerdy physicists and against all odds, they become friends? Well, this is exactly what happens in the Big Bang Theory. I'll be playing Penny, who's the beautiful next door neighbor that just moved in. And she is a waitress at the Cheesecake Factory. And she only has a high school diploma, so the nerds make fun of her. One of her neighbors is Leonard, the awkward, short physicist who soon falls in love with Penny. Leonard has a doctor's degree and is Sheldon's roommate. I'll be playing Sheldon. Sheldon's the genius of the group and isn't afraid to hold out over everyone else. He constantly demeans his companions, but he knows a variety of facts and can solve almost any problem. The only problem he can't solve, though, is the key to humor. Howard and Raj are friends of Leonard and Sheldon. Howard is an engineer and is usually looked down upon strongly by Sheldon. Raj is kind of the outcast of the group because of his Indian accent and his inability to talk to women, unless he's intoxicated. In this skit, we'll be doing the very first episode of Big Bang Theory, where Penny just moves in and she meets Sheldon and Leonard for the first time. And just to let you know, these are going to be the stairs, and this is Leonard and Sheldon's apartment, and this is Penny's apartment. Want to hear an interesting thing about stairs? Not really. If the height of a single step is off by as little as two millimeters, most people will trip. I don't care. Two millimeters? That doesn't seem right. No, it's true. I did a series of experiments when I was 12. My father broke his sabbatical. Is that why they sent you to boarding school? No, that was the result of my work with lasers. New neighbor? Evidently. Significant improvement over the old neighbor. 200 pound transvestite with a skin condition. Yes, she is. Oh, hi. 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 We don't mean to interrupt, but we live across the hall. Oh, that's nice. Oh, um, no, like, we don't live together. Um, we live together, but in separate heterosexual bedrooms. Uh, okay. Well, I guess I'm your new neighbor, Penny. Leonard? Sheldon? Hi. 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 Well, um, welcome to the building. Thank you. Maybe we can have coffee sometime? Oh, great. 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 Well, bye. 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 Should we have invited her for lunch? No, we're going to start season two of Battlestar Galactica. We already watched the season two DVDs. Not with commentary. I think we should be good neighbors. Invite her over. Make her feel welcome. We never invited Louis slash Luis over. Well, then that was wrong of us. We need to widen our circle. I have a very wide circle. I have 212 friends on MySpace. Yes, and you've never met any of them. That's the beauty of it. I'm going to invite her over. We'll have a nice meal and chat. Chat? We don't chat. At least not offline. Well, it's not difficult. You just listen to what she says, then you say something appropriate in response. To what end? Hi again. Hi. 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 Anyway, um, we brought home Indian food, and I know that moving can be stressful. And I find that when I'm undergoing stress, that good food and company can have a comforting effect. Also, curry is a natural laxative, and I don't have to tell you that a clean colon is just one less thing to worry about. Leonard, I'm not an expert here, but I believe that in the context of a lunch and invitation, you might want to skip the reference to bowel movements. Oh, you're inviting me to eat? Yes. So, uh, that's nice. Um, I'd love to. Great. So, what do you guys do around here for fun? Well, today we tried masturbating for money. <coughs> and now we're in the next scene, which is... <laughs> Alright, now we're in the next scene, which is in Sheldon and Leonard's apartments. 
Okay, well, make yourself at home. Okay, thank you. You are very welcome. Wow, this looks like some serious stuff here. Leonard, did you do this? Actually, that's my work. Wow. Yeah, well, it's just some quantum mechanics with a little string theory doodling around the edges. That part there, that's a joke. It's a spoof of the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. So you're like one of those beautiful mind genius guys? Yeah. That's really impressive. I have a board. This is my board. Holy smokes. If by holy smokes you mean a derivative's restatement of the kind of stuff you can find scribbled on the wall of any men's room at MIT, sure. What? Oh, come on. Who hasn't seen the differential below? Here I sit broken hearted. At least I didn't have to invent 26 different dimensions just to make math come out. I didn't invent them. They're there. In what universe? In all of them. That's the point. I sit. So sit next to me. No, I sit there. What's the difference? What's the difference? Here we go. In the winter, the sea is close enough to the radiator to remain warm, yet not so close as to cause perspiration. In the summer, it's directly in the in the path of a cross breeze, created by open windows there and there. It faces the television at an angle that is neither direct, thus discouraging conversation nor so far wide as to create a parallax distortion. I could go on, but I think I've made my point. So, do you want me to vote? Well, just sit somewhere else. Fine. Sheldon, just sit. Well, this is nice. We don't have a lot of company over. That's not true. Cooper Pally and Wallwoods come over all the time. Yes, I know, but... Tuesday night we played Cling on Bongo until 1 in the morning. Yes, I remember. I resent you saying we don't have company. I'm sorry. That's an anti-social implication. I said I'm sorry. So, Cling on Bongo? Yeah, it's like regular Bongo, but in Klingon. That's probably enough about us. Tell us about you. Oh, okay. Um, I'm a Sagittarius, which probably tells you way more than you need to know. Yes, it tells us that you participate in a mass cultural delusion, that the sun's apparent position relative to arbitrarily defined constellations and the time of your birth somehow affects your personality. Participate in that? I think what Sheldon's trying to say is Sagittarius wouldn't have been our first guess. Oh, yeah. A lot of people think I'm a water sign. Okay, let's see. What else? Oh, I'm a vegetarian. Oh, except for fish. And the occasional steak. I love steak. That's interesting. Leonard can't process corn. Um, do you have some sort of job? Oh yeah, I'm a waitress at the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, okay. I love cheesecake. <laughs> You're lactose intolerant. I don't eat it, I just think it's a good idea. Well, anyways, <laughs> uh, I'm also writing a screenplay. It's about this sensitive girl who comes to LA from Lincoln, Nebraska to be an actress and winds up a waitress at the Cheesecake Factory. So it's based on your life? No, I'm from Omaha. Well, if that was a movie, I'd go see it. I know, right? Okay, let's see, what else? Um, that's about it. That's the story of Penny. Well, this sounds wonderful. It was, until I fell in love with a jerk. What's happening? Oh God, you know, four years I lived with him. Four years, that's like as long as high school. It took you four years to get through high school? Don't. <laughs> I just, I can't believe I trusted him. Should I say something? I feel like I should say something. You? No, you only make it worse. You wanna know what the most pathetic part? Even though I hate his lying, cheating guts, I still love him. Is that crazy? Yes. No, it's not crazy. It's a paradox. And paradoxes are a part of nature. Think about light. Now, if you look at the Huygens, light is a wave. 
as confirmed by the double slit experiments. But then along comes Albert Einstein and discovers that light behaves like particles too. Well, I didn't make it worse. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm such a mess. And on top of that, I forgot to tell you about the Shower works. Really? Uh, would it be totally weird if I used it? Yes. No. 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 Thanks. You guys are really sweet. Well, this is an interesting development. How so? It has been some time since we've had a woman take her clothes off in our apartment. That's not true. Remember at Thanksgiving, my grandmother's with all time said that episode? Point taken. It has been some time since we've had a woman take her clothes off after which we didn't want to rip her eyes out. The worst part was watching your car in the turkey. <laughs> so what exactly are you trying to accomplish here? <laughs> Excuse me? That woman in there is not going to have sex with you. Well, I'm not trying to have sex with her. Oh good, then you won't be disappointed. What makes you think she wouldn't have sex with you? I'm a male, and she's a female. Yes but not of the same species. I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals here. I'm just trying to be a good neighbor. Oh, of course. That's not to say that if a carnal relationship were to develop, that I wouldn't participate, however briefly. Do you think this possibility will be helped or hindered when she discovers your Luke Skywalker No More Tears shampoo? It's Darth Vader shampoo. Luke Skywalker's the conditioner. If you enjoyed this segment of the Big Bang Theory, then you can tune in to CBS on Thursday nights. Watch that episode.